that produces a rather significant prolonged brain inflammation, particularly with the adjuvant they're going to use, which is called MF-59 and uh, ASO-3, which contains squalene. Squalene is associated with a very high uh, incidence of autoimmune disorders, particularly of the brain, uh, for instance, producing a multiple sclerosis-like syndrome. Uh, In fact, didn't uh, some of the best evidence was when they guinea pigged a few years ago the anthrax shots to see what would happen with the troops in different levels, and it it killed quite a few of them. Well, it caused a two hundred percent increase in ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, which is a fatal disorder. Uh, so they finally admitted that it took a long time to get them admitted. Uh, several, uh, I remember a, a lieutenant colonel testifying before Congress, and he was in the. Uh, middle stages of ALS and eventually died. Uh, it, it took a lot of pressure for they admitted, yes, the vaccine caused these soldiers to die from this horrible disease. Uh, well, it's not the only disease that's neurological, this Guillain-Barre ascending paralysis that you talked about. Well, in 1976, there were over 500 reported cases, but there were probably 10 or 100 times a uh, greater number of cases that were never reported because it's not a reportable disease. You don't have to report it. Uh, they had three elderly people died in one vaccination center in one day uh, after receiving the vaccine. And they're doing the same thing now they did back then. It's the bait and switch. They tested one vaccine and then gave millions of people a different vaccine. That's exactly what they admit they're planning to do now. I have in Nature magazine... Uh, an interview with the head of the U.S. Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, Anthony Fauci, F-A-U-C-I, and they asked him a series of questions. One was, what are you going to do to test this vaccine? They said, well, we have five tests. Uh, and they said, well, are you going to put the adjuvant in the vaccine to test it? And he said, no, we're going to test it without the adjuvant on children and pregnant women and other people. Uh, and then he said, well, are you going to use the adjuvant uh, vaccine uh, when you actually give it to people? He said, yeah. So they're testing one vaccine, and uh, it's going to give a different vaccine. It's the adjuvant, the powerful immune stimulant, that produces most of the complications that are associated with vaccination. And the next question, he said, are you going to test uh, adjuvants in children? And he said, and I quote, I don't think anybody has really good data on adjuvants in children. And decision that we will not give it, uh, give the adjuvated flu vaccine to kids, we don't have time to collect substantial data. In other words, during the test, but when the vaccine comes out, the children will get uh, vaccines with adjuvant in it. Now, Dr. Blaylock, I just to interrupt you. Talking to yourself and, 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 and other scientists, other medical doctors, other um uh, brain surgeons and neurologists, more and more we're realizing that, yes, mercury and, and aluminum are bad, do build up, do cause problems when it's directly put in the bloodstream. You know, different from eating fish and it goes through you and is bound to the other, uh, you know, you know, other things in the food. So, so most of it, uh, it, it leaves the body. Again, I'm not here being a doctor. I'm just going off what doctors have said. Do you agree with a lot of literature coming out that Mercury overall is somewhat of a red herring, that it's really the autoimmune uh, inflammation, not just in the brain, but even in other organs that's being associated with burning out the pancreas, attacking the liver, attacking uh, uh, the stomach walls, the intestinal walls, the brain, uh, the, uh, I mean, just basically the whole body. Well, you know, all of this has been proven, and we know that mercury, even in infinitesimally small doses, powerfully increases brain inflammation, activates the brain's immune system, uh, which is destructive of, of brain connection. Oh, so mercury is the is the adjuvant. Okay, so, so I always thought it the is, mercury was the preservative. Okay. Well, it is the preservative, but it also produces a high incidence of autoimmunity. You see, they never mention that mercury does this uh, effect ah. when they talk about it. But it's well demonstrated. There's no question. I mean, it's accepted that in infinitesimally small doses, it produces significant brain disruption. It collects in the brain and stays there a lifetime. Uh, for instance, a child uh, in the past was given uh, 36 vaccines, most of which contain mercury. Each one of those doses accumulated in the brain for a lifetime. 
question whatever they ate, whatever they breathed in the air, whatever was in their food was added to it. Uh, this was totally ignored. All of this stuff you hear about, well, we proved that vaccines, uh, mercury has no relation to disease, is an absolute lie, and they know it. Uh, it's in the scientific literature. I write about it. It's in my articles on my website. Uh, I've published a number of articles on this. Uh, all the references are there. Uh, so they know it. Uh, they know all of these things. Uh, well, doctor, let me ask you a, 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 a layman's question and then go in, in other directions about this upcoming shot and what this Gillian Bernays is, you know, compared to the ALS and the other things you were uh, you were talking about. And all these new neurodegenerative diseases that I guess give the brain doctors a lot of work, but uh, is really being generated by this and other environmental factors that you were discussing. When you've engaged in brain surgeries, when you've done slides of tissue or, or biopsies, uh, I've seen, just as a layman in medical journals, the incredible heavy metal plaques, uh, the other plaques that are involved. Uh, can you ever even say in an older person's brain that's had a large diet of heavy metals or worked in toxic factories or had a lot of shots, can you even see that in slides with the naked eye? Or what does it look like under a magnifying glass or under a uh, microscope? Well, you don't see the metals directly, but you see the results of the metal. And, of course, they, they carefully measure these metal contents in the different parts of the brain and demonstrated, for instance, in Alzheimer's disease. There's a significant elevation of mercury in the part of the brain affected uh, uh, in Alzheimer's patients. They also have higher blood mercury levels uh, than the, the population without the disorder. Uh, so most of these things have been carefully confirmed and measured. The aluminum content of the brain has been measured. And what aluminum does in the brain has been demonstrated quite uh, clearly. So, yes, you can see the pathology in the brain produced by this. And, in fact, they even radio-labeled the aluminum in vaccine and traced it going from the site of the injection in the muscle into the brain. So we know that the aluminum from the vaccine ends up in the brain. Uh, so you can't argue about that. That's in, that's in the uh, uh, PubMed uh, medical journals uh, and, and quite well demonstrated. Uh, so, they, you know, the, the evidence is there in just enormous amounts. It's just being ignored, and the media is in a state of confusion. They're listening to the people who are selling this stuff, and they won't listen to those of us who have researched it carefully. Now, about your neurological diseases, I will wager if they do what they're planning on doing, you will see uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of cases of Guillain-Barre and other neurological uh, damage in, in pregnant women. Their children are going to be damaged. Uh, the uh, children are going to be damaged because they're planning on vaccinating babies with this stuff. Uh, and they even ask them, what, what do you think the effect will be of giving free vaccines? Uh, let me give you his answer to that question. We don't know. That's the beginning of his answer. We don't know what it'll do. We don't know what happens when you combine vaccines with different viruses in it. Well, the virologists know the viruses start exchanging uh, their genetics. They develop hybrids. They uh, develop new viruses that produce new diseases. Uh, so he's lying. And all of this nonsense, well, oh, the, you know, the big uh, uh, scare is coming. Of course, there's not many people dead in the world. This has been a pretty mild flu. Uh, they asked him, well, if the virus is mutating, what good will the vaccine do? And he says, oh, we've been checking the molecular and genetic makeup of these viruses all over the world. It has not changed one bit. That is a complete lie. I mean, it's all over the news that a month ago in one week there were five new mutations at one lab just in Houston. Uh, sir, clearly you went over the medical journals and the facts, Dr. Blaylock, that they know what all this is doing. When we look at uh, Paul Ehrlich and John P. Holdren, both presidential advisors, one of them, the head science czar for those out there just now tuning in, they openly say sterilize people through the vaccines, sterilize them through the water. Other U.N. documents, like their biological diversity assessment, say use chemicals to brain damage the public. Uh, Nobel Prize winners that we've quoted and covered in my film uh, in game, like Bertrand Russell said, we will inject the public with heavy metals and brain damage the lower classes to be our servants. 
as a brain surgeon, as a neurologist, looking at this, knowing they're lying, knowing they know that one shot of the flu vaccine, what the reports are, three flu shots, doubles your chances of Alzheimer's in the, in the studies. So they, if they know what they're doing, then the question is, why are they doing it? Is this part of the larger Brave New World, Dr. Blaylock? Well, they're planning on giving the vaccine to 4.9 billion people worldwide. They have been caught in the past giving vaccines that were specifically designed to produce infertility uh, in African women. Uh, the women caught on wouldn't take the vaccine. They tested the vaccine and found out they had put antitrophoblastic antigen in it with a specific goal of producing infertility. So they have been caught. Uh, using a tetanus vaccine. They also used it in Central America. 